Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Blue from TryHackMe. So this is a simple, it looks like a Windows box, uh, very similar to the one we might have taken a look uh, at a few days ago on Hack the Box. Uh, but a lot of you have been actually requesting me to go through uh, TryHackMe, uh, primarily because they, uh, they, they really cover or promote the use of a methodology. As you can see, it sorts uh, every stage based on tasks and uh, it's a great way of actually instilling that, uh, especially for beginners. So again, uh, they start off with recon, gaining access, escalating, cracking, and then finding flags. So I'll, you know, just uh, to just to see some basic information regarding this box. Um, so it says, "Scan and learn what exploit this machine is vulnerable to." Uh, please note that this machine does not respond to pings. So that means we have to we can perform a don't ping scan and uh, it may take a few minutes to boot up. So I've already booted it up. Uh, this room is not meant to be boot to root uh, or a CTF. It's an educational series for complete beginners. Uh, right, so the reason I'm covering this is to get started with the methodology. As I said, I'll pr I'll pretty much, I think I'm gonna be subscribing to their service because they have some cool rooms that I wanna be getting into. So getting started with Recon, you can see the first uh, thing I've answered the two first questions just to see if that was working. Um, so the first two questions are in regards to scanning it, which I've already done. The IP address has changed because I uh, rebooted the machine or the particular box. Um, so my Nmap scan is here and I'll just give it out to you right over here. As you can see the IP changed and I pretty much just did this a few minutes ago. So my scan is quite comprehensive. It's a SYN scan and uh, we're of course specifying the don't ping option, an aggressive scan on all ports and we are, we are putting this to nmap.txt. So in regards to ports that are, um, we actually go back to the question here. Uh, so it says how many ports are open with a port number under 1000? Um, if we actually go back into our terminal here, you can see pretty much only three ports right over here. Uh, so that was fairly easy to answer. Right, so it's gonna ask us uh, for the third question on the recon, what is this machine vulnerable to? So let's take a look at the Nmap scan. All right, so the Nmap scan reveals that this is a Windows box and uh, right from the SMB port, we can tell this is Windows 7 Professional uh, uh, build 7601 and it's running on service pack one. And um, it doesn't give us anything else regarding the architecture, but we see we have some uh, Microsoft RPC ports running. Uh, for the SMB or for the default script scan, you can see it displays the, uh, the version, the SMB uh, version here, which is in this case going to be, it has SMB version one and SMB version two. And um, again, we don't get any more information regarding the architecture of the operating system. And when I'm talking about the architecture, I'm referring to the, uh, to whether it is a 32 bit or 64 bit. Right, so uh, whenever we're dealing with uh, Windows boxes, uh, specifically Windows, uh, Windows operating systems below Windows 10 uh, that have the SMB port running, and in this case, it pretty much tells us that we might be having an issue with uh, the SMB uh, security here. So uh, what we can do is we can uh, load up our Nmap scripts here. And again, as I said, if you want to list out your Nmap scripts really, really easily, you can open up the Nmap scripts directory and you can then grep and look for exactly what you're looking for in terms of the scripts uh, or, the, or the port uh, that you're targeting. In our case, we're targeting SMB because most of the Windows um, exploits or vulnerabilities primarily lie with SMB. And in this case, you can see it's gonna ask us for the uh, actual uh, vulnerability code here. So if we take a look at this here, we can, uh, we can pretty much use any of these scripts. Uh, we can use the SMB OS discovery if we wanted to discover the, uh, more about the uh, operating system in question. Um, I also want to run the Eternal Blue, uh, the Eternal Blue vulnerability checker, which is uh, provided by this script here, which has the uh, vulnerability code. Uh, again, if you want to learn more about these vulnerabilities, you can actually just Google them really, really simply here. And again, it gives you more in, uh, information about them. Uh, this, in this case, is referring to Eternal Blue. So to get started with that, we'll say sudo nmap. Um, SSPN, uh, so that is a SYN scan, don't ping. We wanna target the SMB port and uh, we are then going to, let me just copy the IP here. That's the IP there. And uh, we'll put in the IP and uh, we want to specify the script 
and we'll just copy the script name right over here. And uh, yeah, we can also run one more script if you want to, but for now, I'm just going to hit enter primarily because I don't want to waste time within this stage here. Um, so there we are. It performs the scan really, really quickly. It tells us that it is vulnerable to the Eternal Blue uh, vulnerability or this particular exploit that is. And it says it's vulnerable to remote code execution on SMB version one servers. So that pretty much means it's going to work. It gives us the CVE code here, which you can take a look at uh, the references for more information. Um, so what we can do now is we can just copy the, uh, we'll just copy that there. It's going to ask us for the, what the active machine is vulnerable to if we submit that. Uh, let's see if we get it right. There we are. The answer is correct. So we now move on to gaining access. It's going to say exploit the machine and gain a foothold. The first thing is to start Metasploit. So we're just going to do that. We'll just say that is complete because that's just really a step here. Uh, so MSF console. And uh, we'll just wait for that to load up. And let's take a look at the new ne the next question. So it's going to ask us for the exploitation code that will run. Now, it is, now Metasploit has an eternal blue exploit so we just need to search for that so eternal um eternal blue and we'll use the one that works on windows 7 and we'll just hit um use and paste that in there and we'll paste this right over here let's see if that is correct uh that is correct all right so now it says the sh uh, show options and set the one required value what is the name of this value so let's show the options like so, just enlarge that. And uh, the only option that we need to change in regards to this particular module is going to be the R hosts option, which is our IP. So our hosts or rather the target IP, uh, my mistake. So we'll just copy that one more time and uh, we'll put that in here and hit enter. So we wanna just type that in. So our hosts submit uh, the next stage is in regards to running the exploit. Okay, so uh, before we do that, we, we can actually specify the payload that we want to use. Now, in this particular one, it looks like the default payload as per this particular module is set to a uh, regular command shell as opposed to a meterpreter session, which again, I'll follow through and I'll take you guys through it as well. Uh, but uh, what I can do is I'll just use the default meterpreter uh, shell. Uh, we'll start off by uh, using the 64-bit version just to see if this uh, if that is our target architecture. Uh, in this case, you can see that it works on 64-bit. So that pretty much means our target is a 64-bit uh, machine. Right, so I need to set the L host and that is one provided to me by the VPN, which I'll just copy here. That is the try hack me VPN. So that is my IP address. So set L host and we'll paste that in there and we can then hit run. So we're going to run the exploit. Now this is the eternal blue exploit. So it's going to send the, it's going to send the buffer and it's going to wait for this. It's going to wait for a few seconds or up to a minute uh, for a response back. So they were sending the SMB version two buffers. And in the meantime, let's take a look at what we can hit as complete. So there we are. That is complete. And then confirm that the exploit runs correctly. You may have to enter for a DOS shell to appear. Background this shell using control uh, plus Z. So that's a quick um, keyboard shortcut if you want to background your session. If this failed, you may have to reboot the target VM, which I think is fine because we should get a meterpreter session. So we'll just wait for this to give us the session. All right, so we can move on to the next stage or the next task. And this is in regards to escalating privileges. All right, so this covers how to upgrade shells, right? Uh, how to upgrade shells in Metasploit. So what we'll do is uh, we will see if we've got a, met uh, a meterpret session. We still don't have one yet. So it looks like it's sent it again. Uh, it sent the buffers one more time. So we'll wait for this. If this doesn't work, uh, then we'll pretty much have to use the command shell uh, because I guess, I'm, I'm guessing that they've structured it that way. All right, so the next question has to do with uh, what options require uh, are required to be changed in regards to the, uh, to the module used to upgrade shells into meterpreter shells. Okay, so that should be fairly simple. And... Um, 
set the required option, run, and then once the metaprotect shell is uh, comp uh, the shell conversion complete, set the session, and then verify that we've escalated to NT authority. Okay, cool, cool. So this is sending one more time. Looks like we've failed quite a few times. Uh, again, it should work, um, but if it doesn't, uh, I'll just have to change the payload that's being used. All right, so I finally got the metaprotect session. I had to restart uh, the box. That's primarily why the IP has changed, because uh, uh, again, I wasn't uh, able to get a successful, uh, I wasn't able to successfully exploit the vulnerability and get a metaprotect session. But as I said, I'm guessing um, through the, uh, or by how this particular box was structured, uh, they made the assumption that you'd pretty much get a command shell. So I'll just take you through how to upgrade uh, your shell to a meterpreter shell. So to do this, what you want to do, and again, you can background your session really easily by using Control Z. It's going to then ask you whether you want to background it. I'm going to hit yes. If you then uh, want to list out your sessions, just type in sessions and that will list them out for you. In my case, you can see given that I already have a you know 64-bit meterpreter shell and NT authority, a lot of the work has already been done. Uh, however, I'll just take you through it. So the module we are looking for is going to be search for a shell, um, shell to meterpret, I believe. So if we search for that, you can see this is a post exploit exploitation module. So we can just copy that and use that here. If we take a look at the questions or the tasks, so it's going to say if you haven't already background the previously gained shell, research online how to convert a shell to a meterpret shell met metasploit. And this is the module here. That's my guess. I would assume this is the only one I know, and that is the only one. There we are. So select this module, use the module path, and show options. What options are we required to change? So I'll just submit that. Oh, yeah, we actually need to submit that right now. So show options. The, the only option we need to specify is going to be the L host and um, the session, right? So Again, we don't need to specify the LOs, but it's always good. Uh, it's always good to do that because the LO, this is a post exploitation module. So the only option we need to change is going to be the session. So I'll hit submit. There we are. So that's correct. So set the required option so we can do that now. So let's start my ses sessions one more time. So we say set session to session one. Uh, what's next? And we're going to hit yes, run. All right. So we want to hit run now. I'm guessing this is going to fail. Um, not entirely sure it's going to work primarily because we already have one. Uh, yeah, so that failed uh, because it could not find the file uh, specified. In any case, that's how to upgrade a regular shell or a command shell into a interpreter shell. Okay, so we can now go back into our interpreter session. So sessions one, that'll switch me back in here. And um, we can then hit complete here. And that is also done. So verify that we've escalated to NT authority. You can easily do this using Meterpreter by typing in sysinfo, hit enter. You can see, uh, yeah, that doesn't display that. So if we get into a shell and we type in uh, who am I, hit enter. You can see we are NT authority. So I'm going to hit yes, we are. Um, as you can see, it actually displays that for you. So list all the processes running using the PS command. And uh, just because we are in a system doesn't mean our process doesn't mean our process is uh, find a process towards the bottom of this list that is running at NT authority and write down the process ID. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go back into the interpreter session here, and we'll list all the processes. And it says look for one at the bottom uh, NT authority or towards the bottom, sorry. So list uh, list all of the processes running via the PS command, just because we're system, etc. Find the process towards the bottom of the list that is running in NT authority and get the process ID. All right, so this is the one here that the process ID is 2596. It's listed in this column here. So 2596. Um, write down the process, no answer needed there, will it complete, migrate to this process so we can migrate, so uh, migrate 2596 and uh, hit enter, I'm not sure that will migrate successfully, there we are, access is denied, 
but we already we can actually move to this one or the SVC host, which is ideal. So migrate uh, 2488, hit enter. I'm sure this is telling us that that doesn't work again. Access denied. Um, if we get, who am I? Sorry, uh, into a shell session here. Who am I? We already have NT authority, so we can hit complete there. It's going to migrate here because we already have a stable interpreter session. All right, so now we're in password cracking, pretty much the final stage here. It's always important to see if you can crack any of the user passwords. Now, this is Windows 7, so it's going to be NTLM. So we can pretty much crack this with John the Ripper. The first thing, however, that we need to do is dump the passwords, as I've already covered in my previous video. Uh, where I talked about Windows uh, enumeration, local enumeration, that is. I mentioned how to uh, how to dump passwords. Uh, there are multiple modules that you can use. However, with the interpreter session, you can simply type in hash dump and hit enter, and it gives us the various hashes for the users on the system. So we can copy these, and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to say we'll use Vim, we'll create a file called hashes.txt, and we'll insert these in here and we'll save this. All right, now when we talk about cracking passwords with John, which again, we've already made a video on. Uh, however, we haven't covered NTLM cracking. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So it's going to say with uh, within our elevated interpreter shell, run the command hash dump and dump all the password hashes. Uh, so what is the name of the non-default user? I'm guessing that's going to be John, right? If I'm not wrong, that is John. So John hit submit. Um, yeah, that's correct. Okay, so copy the password hash to a file and research how to crack it. So in this case, it's telling us only to crack the user password or the user hash for the user John. So we'll just get rid of the administrator and the guest account, sorry, and we'll write those changes. And uh, let's just take a look at the other ones. So this is for the flags. All right, so let's get to cracking. So uh, we'll go back into the terminal. Uh, before I get started, I just want to make sure I have the word list. So user share uh, word lists. By default, we have uh, rock you. So what I'm going to do is we'll say um, gzip and we're going to decompress user share um, word lists. Uh, we can actually just use tar. Uh, so we say tar. Well, that is just a gzip file. So gzip. Um, so user share word lists. And we'll say rock you hit enter. Give it root privileges here. Because we're now using the default Kali user, which is always a pain in the neck. Okay, so in cracking, we want to say sudo john. Uh, we then need to specify the format. In this case, the format is going to be nt. Uh, Primarily because landman is is not there, but it is included or, or it is combined with the NT hash. Uh, so format is going to be NT. And then we specify the word list. So uh, word list is going to be equal to user share word lists. Uh, and we're going to look for rock u.txt. And uh, we then need to provide the hashes or the file containing the hashes hit enter. And uh, it's going to begin the cracking process. And it gives us the password here. It's LQFNA22. So we'll copy that. And um, let's put it in here. Hopefully that's the correct password. And uh, that is correct. So we'll get rid of that. And we can now move on to finding the flags. So you'll find three flags planted on this machine. That's weird. I thought they said this isn't a capture the flag. Anyway, uh, that's just uh, splitting hairs there. So finding flags. Um, so flag one, flag two, and flag three. Flag one, um, only submit the flag content. Okay. Um, Errata. So Windows really doesn't like the location of this flag. This is flag two and uh, may occasionally delete it. So it may be necessary in some cases to terminate or restart the machine. Okay. And then flag three. Right, so what we'll do is we'll go back into our session here and uh, we're going to go back to the root of the C drive. If I list all the files here, 
uh, we we have flag one immediately so that's stored in the root of the C drive so cat uh, flag one sorry that is flag one get that uh, out access the machine flag is access the machine only submit the flag contents hmm, that's weird so the flag is access the machine okay so we'll just copy that that's a weird flag uh, I was expecting some sort of base64 type code uh, right so that is correct and uh, we then need to look for flag 2 so let's try and see if we can find it within one of the users directory um, so flag 2 we have the user john so we'll check there before the administrator um, which doesn't actually have a user account uh, user data segregation so within here we can see that we have uh, nothing here so we'll check the desktop that doesn't display anything let's just check the documents um it said that the second flag will be kind of difficult to find because windows automatic automatically deletes it so that's going to be under the windows directory so let's just check documents here and we got flag three all right so we have flag three instead of flag two which is fine so flag three and admin documents can be valuable that is correct a lot of admins store their documents within the documents directory that's just a guess i don't know i'm pretty sure they don't do that uh, but anyway so for flag two i don't know exactly where this might be so again i'll just go into the root of the c drive and we'll say locate full file uh, flag 2.txt and i'm guessing this is going to take a while uh, sorry, not locate, uh, search. We want to search for this. What am I doing? We're not on Linux here. So Meterpret has an inbuilt um, feature that allows you to search for files or directories and specify the file name or the file extensions. And you can use the wild uh, the wildcard option to look for all TXT files, for example. So I'm guessing this is going to take a while. So I'm just going to wait for this to complete. All right, so it tells us that uh, the flag 2 is under the Windows System32 config flag. It's under the, that directory and uh, it's actually found it, which is cool. So we can cat the contents of this file here. Uh, so it's saying the file uh, cannot find that. So we pretty much have to go into Windows, uh, CD, System32. Hmm, that's weird. And then into the config directory, which should then have the flag 2.txt. So, yeah, this is quite a large directory. That's why you can see it's actually taking a while. So, uh, what directory is that again? Uh, config, I believe. Yes, yeah, the config directory. So, cd uh, config. And uh, we'd actually don't want to list anything in there. So, flag 2.txt. Hit enter and it says the flag name is sam database elevated access okay so we'll put in the um the flag to right over here and uh, that looks like it is complete all right so that was a fair again a simple uh, box but very very good i like the part uh, where it actually covers password cracking because it really uh, on other systems or other ctfs that's not encouraged or it isn't done you're simply just looking for flags so overall i really like triacme we'll be going through the next machine so completed blue check out ice so we're going to take a look at that right now actually uh, but that being said thank you very much for watching let me know what you guys uh, thought if you have any comments feedback suggestions or love to hear what you guys have to say uh, if you have any questions or suggestions let me know in the comment section or on my social networks either on twitter or linkedin uh, or if you want to join the discussion on this particular video you can join our forum at forum.hackexploit.org and uh, there'll be a special thread set up for every video so you can join in uh, re uh, and actually communicate and discuss with other users or any other user part of the audience. That being said, that's going to be it for this video and I'll be seeing you in the next video. I just want to take a moment to thank all our Patreons at patreon.com forward slash hackersploit for all the support. Your support and help is truly appreciated. You keep us making uh, newer and fresher and better content. 
Um, so I just want to say thank you to all the Patreons. Um, so thank you, Murph the Surf, Daniel Bork, Jonathan Kyle, Adam Mack, Jamal Guillory, Dafim Bari, Jeremy Nikolai, Mary Hara, Max Chow, Dustin Umpress, Michael Hubbard, and Jerry Speds. <laughs>